Hi, my name is Jason Shaw. I'm a technical marketing engineer with the UCS product group. This video is part of the UCS Advantage series, which is designed to highlight the products and tools available to customers using the unified computing system. This segment is going to cover UCS Performance Manager and how you can use this product to monitor your converged infrastructure. UCS Performance Manager was designed to address a number of common questions that we would hear from our customers. Questions like, how do I view the UCS fabric utilization? How can I look at the links between my fabric interconnects and my FEXs or my I.O. modules and know when, I, when it's safe to add more capacity or remove capacity? How, also, how can I look at my Ethernet uplinks or my fiber channel uplinks and understand their utilization and when I may need to add more capacity or take capacity away? How can I monitor the infrastructure around UCS with a single tool, ideally, monitor things like network switches, SAN switches, my storage arrays, my hypervisors. UCS Performance Manager is packaged up as a virtual appliance. So from Cisco.com you would download a single OVA, deploy this into your hypervisor of choice. Today we support VMware or Hyper-V. After a few initial setup steps of pointing the tool towards the open interfaces of your infrastructure, interfaces like SNMP or the open APIs that those products offer like the UCS Manager XML API or the SOAP API that vCenter has. Once you've set up the tool and pointed it to the various infrastructure elements, the tool will just continuously collect performance data, provide and model the um, devices and provide uh, relationship views. So let's take a look at some of those views. When users first log in, they're greeted with the UCS Performance Manager dashboard. This is customizable through widgets or portlets as we call them. So we're looking at a chassis capacity portlet which quickly lets us point out our busiest uh, chassis within a UCS domain. Another portlet we'll add here is a server capacity portlet to let us quickly uh, find our busiest servers, blades or racks, within a domain. We can sort through uh, some of the columns that you see at the top, uh, average transmitter receive utilization or max transmitter receive utilization. There's a number of other portlets that we'll, we'll take a look at as well. So the topology view, this is something that paints very quickly after adding a new UCS domain in. We get uh, a graphical representation of the topology of that system, um, links that we can click on, visual fault indications when thresholds have been crossed or faults exist on an object. <coughs> you can see I clicked on that fiber channel link leaving switch A and got to look at graphs as well as faults and alerts um, relative to that fabric interconnect. We can scroll through our topology here and see uh, how many chassis we have or how many racks, both FEX attached or direct attached racks. The bandwidth view within the UCS domain that you see here, this is probably one of the most differentiating views, I think, uh, in this product. We can look at the UCS traffic from a network perspective, starting with the SAN cloud, looking at totals going northbound for that entire domain, uh, or go into each individual fabric interconnect or the fiber channel members. And again, sort uh, according to what type of traffic we're looking for. Similar, similarly, on the LAN cloud, uh, you'll see us move to the LAN cloud as well, and uh, same type of breakdown there. Um, totals of Ethernet traffic going northbound or going into each individual fabric interconnect and the Ethernet members. In this case, these are four 10 gig lengths of a port channel, and I can look at this from the port channel perspective here or go down to the individual members. You can see I've got FEXs and uh, we break out direct attached storage as well, which I don't have uh, configured in this example. So lots of great traffic here. You know, when we look inside of a chassis, this is how we can look at the fabric level, you know, how utilized are those links between my IO modules and my fabric interconnect. And I can see this again as a whole or the individual 10 gig links. When I switch to the server view, now I'm looking at this from a server's perspective, blades in a chassis, or even my FEX attached rack mount servers or directly attached rack mount servers and get utilization that way as well. So there's a lot of objects here within a UCS domain that we can look at. I can click on my chassis. Again, you can see uh, 
there's rack servers. I can look at this from a service profile perspective. Here I'm going to drill in on a chassis, see my blade servers within that chassis listed below. Um, we have statistics all the way down to virtual HBAs and virtual NICs in UCS, so we break those out here. I can look at um, a named fiber channel interface in a service profile here or a named NIC interface and actually get graphs related to that individual NIC. So this is our aggregation pool view. You'll see this uh, in each UCS domain that you have registered. This is a collection of all the areas of aggregation within a UCS domain. Some of the same data w that we've seen in other places. Here are our total uh, fiber channel views you know, for the entire domain per fabric interconnect, uh, per member on a fabric interconnect. We're also going to see the numbers for traffic between the fabric interconnect and the IO modules or the FEXs. Um, you can get some summaries of server traffic either servers within a given chassis, servers within a domain. Uh, we're looking at network traffic here. So similar to earlier, we get some utilization for the total amount of Ethernet traffic going northbound and then you know broken down in this case per chassis. Now when we look at service profiles, you'll notice something interesting. Uh, CPU utilization, memory utilization, these are things that you normally would not see in UCS Manager. But because we're monitoring the operating system as well, we're able to take data that we're pulling from different areas and actually consolidate it in this service profile view. Let's take another look at the dashboard. So earlier we talked about the integrated infrastructure events. This is something we can use to have a widget that provides us with all the all the totals of our faults and alerts against a grouping of infrastructure, in this case a FlexPod. We can go back to infrastructure and take a look at all of the objects that we've dragged and dropped to create this FlexPod object and generate a dynamic view showing how all of these components relate to each other and give us a sense of where our faults are and maybe guide some troubleshooting. Anything in here is clickable as well and take you to the context of that object. So we'll take a look at a switch. Um, this is the breakdown of what you would get through SNMP. Uh, in this case, it's a Nexus 5548. So I can look at my port channels, my areas of Ethernet aggregation coming into that switch. You can see we break out uh, all the faults and alerts that, that the switch may generate. I can look at my fiber channel interfaces. I'm doing fiber channel switching on the switch in this example. So we can look at the individual fiber channel ports. Now let's take a look at a vCenter and see how that gets modeled. So we get a nice summary page of how much storage and compute we're using, how much is remaining. I can navigate through my clusters uh, into my hosts within that cluster and also view all of the virtual machines within that host. Um, if you have your operating system registered, we do correlation between the host name at the operating system and the VM name. And then, uh, as you saw earlier, we can also centra uh, centralize you know, CPU memory uh, utilization along with network utilization. So this is all information coming from the vCenter API. Now here's the operating system view of that registered operating system. We have graphs. We actually have a dynamic view that we can generate within this view here which will show you how that virtual machine is mapped through the infrastructure, what vCenter is being managed uh, by its host that it's running on, the service profile, you know, all of the ownership through the UCS domain. So you can also take operating systems that are related and register them into something called an application group and take a look at maybe for a couple of operating systems how they map through the infrastructure if you're having uh, you know, troubleshooting a problem and you want to see uh, multiple server operating systems in the context of how they map through the infrastructure, this is a great way to view that. And then certainly you can click on any of these objects and navigate right into, uh, for example, in this case, a particular blade. So we've got a number of reports that are built into the system, some customized for UCS, 
others standard you know performance type reports We've got a great hardware inventory that really digs into uh, all the hardware components serial numbers and such there's some great bandwidth uh, reporting tools in there some 95th percentile where you can kind of chop off your spikes and look at your trends and all of the data that you report against is held unaltered in the database for up to a full year so to summarize, we've looked at how UCS Performance Manager can help a system administrator monitor and understand capacity for a set of converged infrastructure, looking not just at the UCS components, but at the network, storage, and hypervisor elements surrounding the UCS domain.